So what is Anthem, and what can we expect from it prior to launch? Well, we're going to find out today, and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome to Guardian Watcher. So today we are going to talk a little bit about the newly and very anticipated game called Anthem. Now this video is indeed my very first Anthem video and this video is going to be just the basics about the game but don't let that fool you because there is a lot of information in this video that you may not even know and the goal of this video is to get you a little bit more acquainted with what to expect. Now all sources will be in the description box below. Anthem is an online multiplayer action RPG based game that was made by the company Bioware. If you don't know, Bioware is a Canadian video game developer that is most famous for other game titles like the Mass Effect series, the Dragon Age series, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, as well as the MMO RPG Star Wars. Wait, what? Which one of you wrote Star Wars in a script? Come on guys. Like, let's be mature as well as the MMORPG Star Wars The Old Republic, just to name a few. Quote, The world of Anthem is a chaotic and ever-changing world, abandoned by the Shaper Gods. We used fortified cities or the use of Javelin exosuits in order to survive. These Javelins are the key to our survival, giving us superhuman abilities. Inside our Javelins, we will be able to fly, swim, fight, and explore anywhere in the world of Anthem. End quote. So, our faction is known as Freelancers, which are an elite group of pilots sworn to protect and seek out mysteries in the world. Quote, the anthem of creation is everything. To control it is everything, end quote. So this anthem thing is a pretty big deal. One of the enemy factions in Anthem are called the Dominion, and they will do what they have to in order to gain control of the anthem of creation. Other enemy factions in Anthem are Scars and the Fury. Now, there are four different classes of javelins. The ranger, which everyone will start off with, is a well-rounded offense and defense as well as a balance of armor and speed. The interceptor, on the other hand, is definitely built for speed, which enables you to get in and out of gun and melee fights with ease. The colossus is definitely your powerhouse. If you want to be very tanky, then the colossus is definitely your class. The storm is going to be your glass cannon. It can deal crazy amounts of damage. It can deal crazy amounts of damage with the help of the elements, but it can't really take that much damage. But don't let that fool you. As a storm, you can easily get in and out of bad situations with your dash or your shield while you're in the air. But I'll get into each classes and their abilities in another video. However, each javelin can be customized to a ridiculous extent. And by this, I mean you can customize your javelins from the colors to your weapons, your armor, and your abilities. And your gear score will indicate how powerful your javelin is. As of this video, there are only four different rarities of gear. Common, which can be represented as being white. Uncommon, which is green. Rare, which is blue. And epic, which is purple. Each javelin will have two slots for offensive gear. One slot for support gear two weapon slots, six component slots, and that we will be able to unlock over time in an ultimate power that is unique to each javelin. Personally, I like the Storm and the Ranger's ultimates the most, but the others aren't bad either. Each class will have five loadouts, and the first one being the default. You can change these loadouts to suit your needs at the Forge before and after every mission. The Forge is where we can change as well as craft our weapons, armor, and abilities with the use of materials in order to become stronger. One second you can have your character as a powerhouse and then the next could be more of a support role. It's all up to you how you would want to make your javelin. At the end of each mission we'll be able to see how we did, collect our loot, and head back to Fort Tarsus which is our social space. At Fort Tarsus we'll meet many new NPCs like Lucky Jack, Zoe, and Amal. Halleck, Faye, and Owen are ciphers who keep us informed when we are out in the field. Then we also have Matthias, Max, Aruna, and Yaro. Halleck and Yaro both sound a little like Jiraiya Sensei from, from Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, but Halleck is actually Nick E. Terabe who actually played Asher in the TV series Spartacus, if you actually follow that type of thing. Ray Chase will be the voice of the male character, and Sarah Amale will be the voice of the female character. I hopefully I pronounced her last name right, but I'm not that good with pronouncing things. Also, 
in Fort Tarsus, we'll be able to visit the marketplace, the courtyard, and we'll be able to see our weekly alliance status. Alliances are the same as clans, your family, the group of people you go with. Inside Fort Tarsus, the camera view isn't first person, but when we are in our javelin, it is switched from first person to over the shoulder third person, so we can get a better view of the area around us. On the map, you'll be able to see your primary missions like Tyrant Mine, secondary missions, or even free play. On the map, you'll be able to see Fort Tarsus, your primary missions like Tyrant Mine, secondary missions, or even free play. Free play is where you get into your javelin and go anywhere and discover what you want in the world of Anthem. While you're on a mission, on the bottom right hand side of the screen, you will be able to see the weapon that you currently have equipped, all your abilities, as well as your ultimate attack meter on the bottom. The rest of the controls are very similar to other shooter games, so it'll be easy to catch on. On a side note, when flying, your javelin will begin to overheat from extensive flying, so make sure you try to fly close to water, that way your javelin can be cooled down, which allows you to fly longer. The cortex is where you can find more information on a particular subject, and this includes the lore in the game. In the journal, you'll find missions, contracts, plus a lot more. As for our currency, it looks like there will be two. One is called coin, and the other is called shards. Coin is depicted as a gold color coin, while shards are depicted as an upside down purple triangle. Also, Anthem will have microtransactions. Now wait, hear me out before you just, like, drop everything and say F this game. Bioware had said that all microtransactions will be completely cosmetic, so there will be no pay to win aspect in this game. There will also be no loot boxes, that way you will always know what we are getting. Now, there are many aspects that separate Anthem from other games of the similar genre. One important aspect is what I feel that a lot of other games are missing, and that is the RPG element of a story. Your character actually has a voice, as well as options to choose from when interacting with other NPCs. Now, what's good about this is the fact that you will be able to build relationships with other NPCs in the game. And no, I'm not talking about any type of love affair, but your responses will help dictate how the story progresses. This is something that I feel that a lot of games of the same genre have been missing for a very, very, very long time. I'm not going to say any names, but Destiny and Destiny 2 um, come to mind. When it comes to Anthem, we have already been through an alpha and a closed beta. As of this video, Bioware is hosting an open beta, so anyone will be able to join either on PS4, Xbox, or PC. Now, I will say this. My first experiences with the closed beta was not pretty at all. As soon as I jumped into the world, I was good for about 10 minutes, and then I started having graphical issues. My character would run in one direction and then skip backwards, which made the game unplayable. And it was extremely frustrating. So. Given Anthem the benefit of the doubt, I deleted it off my PS4 and then I re-downloaded it and I never experienced the issue ever again. But there were other issues. There's things like freezing on loading screens, my ultimate would not activate when I was pressing it on the D-pad, my ultimate looked like it was being activated when it wasn't, and you know, other things of that nature. Now Bioware has said that the closed beta was an old version of the demo and that they had already fixed many of the issues that that version was experiencing. But my thing is, if you knew that version had issues, then why would you release it to the public? I mean, you do want us to play the game, right? Why not just give us the beta version that did work and then you fix any issues that are fine in that version? I don't know. Maybe my thought process is wrong. Either way, when the Anthem demo did work on the closed beta, it was quote, buttery smooth, end quote. As a friend of mine, Uncle Boogie would say, and I definitely enjoyed it a lot. Now, I have played the open beta for a while, and it definitely seems like a lot of those issues that I had in the closed beta are no longer there. And for that, I am actually excited, because Anthem has been an extremely fun game to play as a demo. And it's because of this that I am happy that I will be covering the Anthem content. When it comes to future videos, I will be getting in depth with the character UI, each class, the forge, as well as other things that are important with the game, so definitely stay tuned for that. And if you guys have any ideas for a video that you want me to do for Anthem, let me know in the comment section below. 
And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these videos as well, if there is any at this moment. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less gun doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.